So the first speaker that we're going to have is Kenneth Young. He's an ex-Canadian soldier, both 1 and 2 RCR, and a chemical defoliant survivor from the use, Canadian use of Agents Orange, Purple, and White at CFP Gage Town. He's an advocate and researcher regarding the Canadian cover-up, the politics of secrecy and denial. He's often debunked the propaganda of our government's use to sidestep both their responsibilities and their liabilities when it comes to the use of toxic chemical defoliants. He was named by Canada's first veterans ombuds, ombudsman as the Canadian face and voice of Agent Orange. He was invited and gave a presentation at the second international conference of victims of Agent Orange held in Hanoi, Vietnam on the 8th and 9th of August 2011, which was the 50th anniversary of the first time Agent Orange was used in Vietnam. After the conference, he toured many different locations in Vietnam where second and third generation victims of chemical defoliants were being looked after. In 2012, he was a guest instructor on Peace Boat Number 77 on the subject of Canada's use of Agent Orange. He's also a founding member of many advocacy groups, including but not limited to the Agent Orange Association of Canada, VETS, and Canadian Veterans Advocacy. He's the advisor for chemical defoliants for many veterans organizations in Canada. He also gives chemical defoliant advice to most of the political parties in Canada. And currently, he is a service officer in the Royal Canadian Legion and has also been asked for advice on veterans' disability pension claims when it pertains specifically to Agent Orange and other chemical defoliants. And this is Kenneth H. Gap. Thank you and good day, ladies and gentlemen, and wonderful ch children here. They need to learn while they're still willing to listen. I'm here today mostly to talk about, we think we're all here to talk about March Against Monsanto's when in reality we're marching against the GMOs. In effect, where it affects our body, health, and yes, even our ability to survive as a living creature on this earth. I'm here to talk about Monsanto's other products. Agent Orange, Purple, White, and all the defoliation chemicals, which commonly came to be known as the Rainbow Chemicals. Beautiful name, but deadly. And where were used in Vietnam during the U.S.-Vietnamese War, which politically was actually a CIA policing action and not a war at all. Most of us here, uh, we hear of Agent Orange, most notorious of the, the chemicals, automatically think of Vietnam and nothing much else. However, it is not U.S. Vietnam problem, it is not an Agent Orange problem, it isn't even a war problem. What is actually happening, happens to be, is a world problem, a chemical defoliation problem, and a farming, forestry, hydro line, railway, and highway right away problem. These chemicals were actually tested here in Canada before they were used in Vietnam. Canada, in fact, produced a large amount of the chemicals that were actually used in Vietnam. In Canada, the Department of National Defense sprayed over 1.1 million liters and 2.2 million pounds of these toxic, deadly chemicals on one single base in New Brunswick, CFP Gagetown. It was sprayed in some places almost 15 times and some spots on the bases were still found to contain 170 times the allowable levels for TCDD dioxin in 2005, almost 40 years after they say, they last time they sprayed dioxin. A few short years ago, scientists finally came to the same conclusion which many of the second and third generation survivors of continued medical problems and birth defects had long and with much reason claimed basically the children and the grandchildren of people who have been exposed to these chemicals were having the same problems and furthermore birth defects were not as uncommon as we were led to believe. New Zealand scientists just a few years ago discovered that significant genetic damage to DNA of Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange. This was found in a study by the Massey Molecule scientists at the Massey University and reported on July 28, 2006. Those who have been exposed to these chemicals had their DNA altered by chemical exposure. It was also suggested that the DNA changes remain for as much as seven generations. I dare say that seven generation idea would be totally dependent on the descendants not coming into further contact with these toxic chemicals 
or at the end results of seven generations of constantly being exposed could very well be a human, if we could still call it that, with seven generations of multiple DNA changes, and sadly, there would be little chance of us getting back to where we are today. But enough of today's history lesson. There is a group called, there's a, a group on Facebook called the C-O-V-V-H-A, or Children of Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance. And although it says Vietnam Veterans, I am sure that any here who have medical problems or, or birth defects, whose parents were employed by the Canadian military, or the forestry hydro lines, Department of Highways, or any other group that got involved in weed control or defoliation because of these chemicals, were registered for use in Canada, should maybe visit their site, and I'm sure they would be welcomed. Now you may be asking, what the heck does that have to do with GMOs in Monsanto's today? Well, to me, it has everything to do with why we are here and marching against Monsanto's, also known as Roundup Ready crops and soon to be 2,4-D crops. And I digress there because it's already been approved now for 2,4-D crops. Some people are even calling it Agent Orange corn because 50% of Agent Orange was in fact 2,4-D which has just recently been found to contain TCD dioxin as well, other, as well as other dioxin compounds. These defoliation chemicals are designed to enter the plant and kill it. Roundup and 2,4-D ready crops are designed to take the chemicals up but not to die from the chemicals. And to me, logic dictates that if the plant absorbs these chemicals, so does the fruit or the part that we eat. And we are not Roundup ready. Most of the chemicals are known carcinogens and many have been demonstrated to cause DNA changes in humans and also birth defects in every animal that has ever been so far been tested on. But it would be illegal and immoral to test the chemicals on pregnant humans. So the company in questions have and will continue to claim that there is no definitive scientific proof that these chemicals cause birth defects in humans. And I personally hope they never can. Now I'm going offline here a little bit because I need to give you a wee bit more of the history of it. In Gagetown, they started spraying in 1956 with Agent Orange. In 1964, after a big accident which killed plants 15, 20 miles out of camp, they decided that they'd change over to Agent White, which at the time was Tardon 101, Tardon 10, which is actually Picloram with 2,4-D again. In 1985, they found that that was killing people, so they changed that again to glyphosate. Does anybody have an idea what glyphosate is? Roundup. <laughs> They've been spraying it in Gage since 1985. They know it's dangerous. It's just been tested, and it's been found to contain uh, all kinds of carcinogens and uh, probably can, can, uh, causes kidney failure at, and a whole bunch of other things. Our problem with problem our problem is that Monsanto's is engineering and modifying plants so they can take up larger amounts of these toxic chemicals. These plants by themselves, because of the modifications to their DNA, may well be toxic and adding to the known toxic as well as the carcinogenic chemicals. There is very little doubt left in my mind that we are soon, if not already, dying from eating them. In the end, it is a lot more complicated than just labeling the food which we eat. We also need to label and know when we consume meat that the animals were also not fed GMO feeds. We are just, or we are just getting secondhand GMOs and chemicals. There is a symbiotic relationship between the three industries and almost there are many companies, brand names and manufacturers they nevertheless all belong to a very small group of people. They are the, the petrol industry, the chemical industry, and the pharmaceutical industry. Oil is needed to make chemicals, chemicals is needed to make pharmaceuticals, and the last two are the first one's biggest customers. Heck, back in the 70s, we even called it petrochemical plants. The combination, combined advertising clout of these three 
pretty much assures that no media can afford to cross the giants and even our government is in bed with them. We must not only demand that all our food labeled, be labeled, that pesticide ready crops and like the Franken crops or GMOs be eliminated altogether. In my opinion, we must demand that our government stop protecting these companies and do this. When we look around the world today, there are millions dead and hundreds of thousands of people suffering from the deadly toxic chemicals produced by Monsanto's. Can anyone please tell me why we're allowing them to feed us using the same chemicals? In closing, there is one thing which I want, and I guess I sh should say to correct the misinformation we've been given. We have, it seems like, forever been told that the government banned the chemical TCD D dioxin in 1985. I neither know where this story or the outright lie was started, nor who started it. But my research has shown it quite the opposite. I personally have asked almost every department in Canada government for the documentation of this supposed banning of TCD dioxin in 1985 and it was report as it was reported but to no avail our government in Ottawa and its departments never got back to me on this issue they neither either couldn't or wouldn't so I decided nothing ventured nothing gained so I wrote to Monsanto's to get that from the horse's mouth to be honest I didn't expect an answer but I got one they told me that it never was banned, that they, the chemical industry, had in 1985 voluntarily discontinued its use in herbicide. Two big problems here. One is if they voluntarily removed it from herbicide use, then this still leaves it registered product in Canada, and if they haven't already, they could at any time of their own choosing put it back into the herbicides without even asking permission. And the second problem is that they were very specific in saying this chemical use was discontinued in, for use in herbicides. But what about the other chemical use, like fungicides, insecticides, microbial sides, and so on? Has anybody ever wondered what products, what's in the product that kills 99.9% .9 of germs? And what is being used to extend the shelf life of canned and jarred foods? Don't be surprised about this. A perfect example of how it is done is now intertwined government is when it comes to these and other Monsanto products was demonstrated just a short while ago when the FDA allowed the name change from aspartame to amino sweet. Is amino sweet any less toxic than aspartame? No, but it will fool the population into another 10 years or so of consuming this product. The funny thing is that they will probably label the product contains that, that do contain amino sweet as contains no aspartame. <laughs> the next change in order to continue on as if nothing happened to be the norm for Monsanto's, which was in Canada also changed its name to be called now Pharmacia. Now, if that was spelt with an F-A-R-M, you could almost, because of the plants they grow, understand. But they spelt the name with P-H-A-R-M-A -A, to help us correct what is being done to us right now. Maybe even to uh, eventually make us round up ready. Be careful out there, Monsanto or Pharmacia is not finished with the human experiment yet. GMOs and GE foods and toxic chemicals used to make them are the proof. You are what you eat, or you will be soon. Thank you.